Preparing to sell a business can be an emotional experience in itself, but there's often a problem for the seller who may have to adjust the balance sheet. Matthew Helfrick joins us now on the Sunday Business page. He's partner and president of Waldron Private Wealth and joins us for some insight on this challenge. Thank you very much, Matthew, for being with us. We appreciate that. This is, you know, 10,000 baby boomers a day are retiring, and I'm assuming some of them do own businesses that are on the corner in your neighborhood, right? Yeah, it's, it's funny, John. Um, most people never think about re rebalancing as it relates to the business that they own, but often, that they own is the largest portion of their balance sheet. So investment education has taught us that when we have an asset that's doing well, it's time to rebalance that asset and redeploy that into other areas. And for baby boomers, what that typically means is, hey, it's time to think about selling this business. And this business is usually the largest creator of wealth for them. So it's that whole process of what do they do and what do they think about uh, before and after they choose to sell their business. And it's really tough to sell a business because you're invested in it. You started it, and you know I'm sure that there's a lot of emotion and anxiety that goes with the separation process. There's a tremendous amount of emotion because most of the time, this is the very fabric of who they are. It's who they are in the community. It's how they, uh, it's been their, their, their point of existence for the last 20, 30, right. 40 years. In addition to that, it could be a family business as well. So there may be implications between how they transfer it from them owning it now to how it moves to that next generation or how it goes to other share, potential shareholders in the business or just an outright sale. Right. Well, I mean, if there's children involved that who would inherit the business, I suppose that's different than just selling it outright. That's much different because it takes much longer to go through that process. Oftentimes there's a, an education component to it as well. What are the expectations behind that business? Uh, what is the plan to economically purchase the business from that prior generation? Because right. that prior generation owns the business, but they may, want to, they may need to monetize that investment, i.e. get some money for it for them to live their retirement and right. beyond. And it, then how does that, that next generation, how do they fund the purchase of that business? You know, it seems to me hardly a week goes by that I don't hear out of their business. You know, that they're either going to sell their business or, in many cases, like a restaurant or a shop, they just close up the door and they walk away. Yeah, it all depends on the, I'd say, the, the is there a willing buyer out there, out there for it? Uh, this region right now, just based on the graphics, there, we are a, a, an older region here, so a lot of the people in this region uh, are reaching that point of retirement as we mentioned before, and because the business is that largest portion, they're taking a look and saying, okay, I want to live a comfortable retirement. And retirement typically means, how are you going to get the money to live your life? And usually that, uh, the big component of that is what you're spending, what you're spending right. you know, before you sell the business and what you're going to be you're spending after you sell the business. Right, and if you're using the business to help support your lifestyle in some way, maybe through a product or whatever, you're going to lose that once you sell it. There are a lot of advantages that people lose when they sell the, the business. Typically, business owners that have owned their business for a long time have some component of their lifestyle tied up within it. So it's understanding your spending uh, after that business is sold and understanding what it takes to really run your life. So the bottom line advice on this is that if you're going to sell your business, you ought to talk to a financial advisor? Absolutely. You need to have a team in place that understands the, the timing and the implications behind the business sale prior to getting, going through that process. Thank you so much for being on the show. We really appreciate this advice, and I, I know it's good for all of us. Plan, 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 whether you own a business or you're just, uh, or you don't. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Matt. Thanks. We'll be back with more of the Sunday Business Page in just a few moments. Stick with us.